Hi guys, welcome to Flip the Deck Tarot. Today's pick a card reading is going to be all about your month ahead for October 2022. So we're going to be looking at what energies are present for you during the month of October, what you have to look forward to, what challenges you might be facing, and all of that good stuff. So we've got three readings to choose from today. For reading number one, we have this 12th house card. For reading number two, we have the Mercury card. And for reading number three, we have the Moon card. So pick whichever of these cards you're feeling the most drawn to. I'm going to put your timestamps down below in the description box. I will jump in with reading number one and I will see you in your reading. Hi, number one, if you were drawn to the 12th house card, this is gonna be your reading. We're gonna be looking at your month ahead for October, 2022. So we're gonna begin your reading by looking at the energy that you were initially drawn to, the 12th house. And this card actually says introspection. Um, this house deals with our subconscious mind, um, the things that are hidden, the things that we even sometimes wish to hide. Um, in the 12th house, we kind of find ourselves in this meditative state, kind of in a contemplative state. And because the 12th house deals with karma, um, I kind of have a feeling that this might be a time of not only reflection for you, but also of release for you. So um, kind of this vibe of closing out karmic cycles and um, evaluating potentially a move to the next phase of something that you have going on in your life. Um, the energy of this card is really giving me hermit vibes. So Virgo energy. Um, that might be referencing your own energy if you do have Virgo placements. There could be somebody in your life with strong Virgo placements. But because we did just come through Virgo season in September, you might be watching this in at the very end of September when I'm um, when I'm doing this reading. But we just came through Virgo season, so this energy for some of you could be referencing something that took place in September or something that was significant to you during the month of September. Um. Yeah, there is kind of, there's this feeling that for some of you, a cycle may be closing out because this introspective energy is kind of helping you to see things more clearly, maybe even to see things that haven't been immediately obvious to you in the past. Um, this 12th house energy is about putting all the pieces together. Um, I feel like the 12th house can get kind of a bad rap sometimes because it does deal with our shadow. And it deals with some of the major lessons that we are here to learn. But what this shows me is that you are learning these lessons and you're implementing everything that you've learned. I wouldn't be surprised if October is a month of major realizations for you because this introspective energy is going to bring you to a place where it's like, it's like you're connecting all the dots. It's like you're, you're bringing in these, um, pieces of yourself, maybe even previous versions of yourself, um, and kind of putting everything together is what it feels like. Let's get some more energy out here and see what's what's happening in October. I just keep hearing integration, integration. Yeah. Number one. What's going on for you in October? Okay. Okay, we have the first house. That That is interesting. Um, so you have the first, you have the first house and the last astrological house, the house, the 12th house. Um, so coming full circle, closing out cycles, that's what we were just talking about. But now this is um, this is kind of solidifying that message that this is about um, a cycle, a completion of something, starting a new chapter. I feel like this is about evaluating the past, evaluating maybe even your shadow and becoming um, becoming this new version of yourself based on 
what you discovered in this 12th house analysis. Because there's something you're shedding. There's something you're leaving behind to make way for this new first house energy. And it's a new you, kind of a new version of self. Interesting. <laughs> okay, you have Descendant. <laughs> I just feel like, like, wow. I, I, whoa, you guys. Um, invitation. So <laughs> there's kind of an invitation here for you to make some kind of big transformation or to come full circle with something. For some of you, this could be something that presented itself or was on your mind a lot during September. But this, this really could also be something brand new. It doesn't... Um, This might be brand new for October. I feel like for a lot of you, it was present in September, but it doesn't have to even be anything that presented itself that recently. Interesting. So I wanna clarify all of this energy, but I'm already seeing some sense of self-discovery here, almost a feeling of reviewing what has taken place, who you've been, um, who you presented yourself to be, what experiences you've had, what lessons um, you've learned, what have your lessons been. And then it's kind of like you're deciding how you want to structure your life and how you want to show up going forward. I don't know why this energy is feeling so big and so significant, but it's almost like I'm reading for the whole year and not just the month of October. <laughs> that's weird <laughs> it's it's really um strange and and kind of heavy all this energy that's coming in not in a bad way it's just it feels so like i was saying it feels so significant uh but now that i'm looking at this you do have the first and the 12th house which might represent like month one and month 12 January through December, indicating one full year. So this could be something that you've been working on for a year or that you had on your radar for this entire year so far. Um, this also could be referencing next year. So something you're working toward for next year. This energy, for some reason, just doesn't feel like it's isolated to the single month of October. I don't know why, but it doesn't. So it's like whatever's going on for you in October is tied to something that is either a part of your past or a part of your future, which is, um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to put it like that, but it's like, this is either something that you've had an idea about for a while or that you've been working on for a while or something that maybe just started for you, but it's going to make a huge impact on your life going forward. Or that's kind of like the vision that you have for it. You see this significantly changing, um, changing your course <laughs> for, for years to come. What goes on in this month of October, like the, whatever's on your mind in the month of October, you see it as a, a way to significantly change or improve your life. Hmm. Yeah. It's like this has been in the works. This is kind of like this process of becoming has been unfolding for a while now. It feels like gaining so much clarity around who you want to be, what you want to learn, and where you want to go from here. That's what it feels like October is about. Um, for some of you, this might be like a significant anniversary, a birthday, some kind of milestone that might be taking place in October. I just feel like for a lot of you, you're either right in the middle of this transformation or you're making changes in yourself that are about to unlock a huge transformative time for you. It's like being able to actually step into this reinvented version of yourself to, to arrive at that place. That kind of like, it, it's like this place that represents who you authentically are right now. So it's, it's like old baggage, past trauma, all of that is being cleared away. 
you guys, this might be intense. Um, I, I was feeling like, oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. Like this sounds like the transformation you might've been waiting for the thing you might've been waiting for. But like, I also have to say when you're going through these kind of transformations, it might be intense. Um, you could feel like like you're a little bit drained. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not that I think it's going to be anything that's going to like stop you or severely impact you. I just want to mention it because if you do start to feel a little bit drained, think about where you are. Like think about what progress you're making, what you've been through, um, how much energetically you're giving to the situations in your life and cut yourself some slack. Cause I feel like there might be a time during this month where you're like, why do I feel this way? I shouldn't be this tired or I should be more focused. And you're kind of like getting down on yourself. And it's like, remember all of the progress that you've made. Remember all the work that you've put in and don't discount what you're going through, like how you're transforming. Energetic transformations can be draining. Like it's a thing. So, so don't, um, don't forget to be kind to yourself because, and I feel like you already know this and you're already discovering this. You really are changing and growing and it really does take energy to do that. So, um, yeah, give yourself a break. This is actually a lot. This is intense. Um, yeah, you, you might have to face some, some fears um, to become this new version of yourself. And I feel like you already have been doing that. Maybe things will have to change in order for you to step into this new version of yourself. But the invitation and the opening is there. And I feel like it's a call you've been ready to answer and like you're super ready to answer or to keep answering in October. Since um, this Descendant Energy does refer to our relationships, you might be changing the way that you show up in relationships or in a particular relationship in your life. Um, something about that relationship might be changing. As for the numerical um, representations that I'm seeing here, I'm seeing five, I'm seeing 10 with this 37, and I'm seeing 11 with this 39. Um, so the 5th through around the 10th or the 11th of the month are kind of jumping out as potentially important dates for you. Um, yeah, let's clarify this a little bit. So let's clarify this 12th house energy, see what this, um, this reflection, this introspection might be about. It's on your mind in October. What is going on in October? What's this 12th house? Oh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I was looking for a card, but we did get two and they did fly out onto the floor. So we know this is our message. I had to work for it. So let's see what we have. We have the Two of Pentacles and the Five of Swords. Okay. So there's a decision to be made here is what this feels like. Um, options are being weighed in October with this Two of Pentacles. Um, yeah, with that kind of energy, because it's clarifying the 12th house energy, I feel like this is about you figuring out, this is about you figuring out who you want to be and what energy you want to embody. The 12th house holds our truest dreams and desires and the things that we kind of keep hidden from the world and, and even hide from ourselves at times. And it also, um, it also contains our deepest fears and the things that we haven't wanted to confront, the things we haven't wanted to face. So October is a month where things start to get unstuck because there's, 
it looks like there's a decision being made to kind of analyze and adapt. And what that's doing is making space for this whole new you to step forward. For some of you, this reinvention is actually physical. Uh, so you might be like dyeing your hair, cutting your hair, making some kind of change to your appearance, um, or changing your diet to transform your health. Um, yeah, but I feel like for most of you, because this 12th house deals with things that are hidden, this is most likely and most potently taking place inside of you in a very personal way. So whatever this change, this transformation is, um, and I think you might've been walking through for a little while now, but it seems like things are amping up for October. I feel like this is really taking place inside of you. You're going to start kind of showing up and displaying, um, these new attributes. So in that way, I feel like there might actually be a physical change, even for those of you that aren't making a, a change to your appearance. It's like you're, you're showing up in a new way. You're being seen in a new way. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's like the changes that you're experiencing either currently like headed into October or during October, these changes are things that you definitely sense. Um, but it's like you, you're kind of questioning, does anyone else see the change in me? Has the change really uh, displayed itself? And it's like, it, it will, I, it might not happen yet, depending on where you are in this process, but it's like the confidence that you're gaining and the clarity that you're gaining is actually, um, it's actually changing the way people see you on, on a very deep level. So yeah, that this feels major. Um, yeah, it just feels like a new chapter for you. For some of you, you might be starting a new job or stepping into a new arena in October. And really what I'm seeing here is this is a chance for you to start fresh or to show up as a new version of yourself, as the version that you want people to um, see you as. Uh, so for some of you, there's like a clean slate opportunity in October. There's this way for you to start fresh, this way for you to embody the energy that you want to embody. And um, I feel like some of you are making first impressions during October. So it's like you get to make this first impression that you feel is very authentic to who you really are. So that, that is interesting. I just heard meeting the parents. So for some of you, this could be, um, this could be referencing something that's going on in your relationship. You might be meeting, uh, like future in-laws for the first time or something like that. Very interesting message to come through. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's this feeling of starting from, from scratch or starting fresh about something. And it feels like such an empowering energy as well. It feels like something that you're excited for, like a transformation that you're very excited for. And, and it just feels like, like, oh, I'm going to be able to start fresh. I can, um, I can get organized the way I want to, or I can start this process exactly the way I want to. I can show up the way I want to, whatever it might be. It just feels like there's a clean slate. For a lot of you, um, this reinvention is starting with prioritizing with this two of pentacles here. So this could be prioritizing yourself and learning how to put yourself first more of the time. Um, particularly if this change is about something going on in your relationship that might be relevant to kind of how your relationship has been playing out. Um, I also feel like some kind of conflict or some internal deliberation is coming to an end during this month uh, as you gain more clarity. So you see how the archer on the two of pentacles is just, he's pointed or I don't know, <laughs> they are, are pointing this arrow right toward the five of swords. So it's like something's laser focused 
and it feels to me like there might have been a, a conflict of interest. Um, there could have been maybe too many options on the table or something that was preventing you from moving into this next phase before, but it just seems like your priorities are getting straight and whatever kind of conflict has been going on inside of you, it's like it just dies um, because you have, you have honed in on exactly what you want is what it feels like. You have made a decision. Um, for some of you, this has something to do with a conflict with another person. So this could be like um, squashing a beef, letting something go, putting a conflict to rest, uh, something like that. But it just, it feels like you're laser focused on the things that you are choosing to prioritize and you're hitting the bullseye in October. Let's, let's look further and clarify this first house. What is going on with this first house energy? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Deck almost got away from me. Um, let's see, so we have the Hierophant clarifying the first house. Okay, for some of you, this is about a new job um, or a new opportunity at a school or an established institution. So this could be that fresh start, um, that clean slate. But what is mainly showing up to me is kind of this idea that you're writing your own script, I want to say. It's like... Um, you're, you're playing by your own rules in a way. The Hierophant energy can be about kind of following the rules. And I do think that there's an element of that for you, but it's like you're adhering to your own set of values here. So in October, there's something I feel you've made your mind up about. Um, and it might be something very subtle and it, 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 it doesn't have to be. This really could be um, a decision about two places or even two people. And I feel like it might be two options because we have this two of pentacles here, but it could honestly even be more. Like it just feels like any areas where there's confusion, there's so much clarity being, um, being gained during October. Yeah. You're, you're taking the information that you learned in the 12th house of introspection and kind of formulating your own ideas or gaining clarity about who you are called to be is how this feels. Um, I'm even picking up on some energy of like marching to the beat of your own drum. So that might have some particular significance to some of you. Um, If there's some situation in your life that's kind of calling you to do your own thing, um, don't be afraid to let your freak flag fly. <laughs> that's, that's hard to say. Don't be afraid. Like, I feel like there's something unique about you. There's something that um, you've been wanting to step into. There's some idea you have. There's something you want to pursue. Maybe it's a little bit um off the beaten path maybe there's some element of it that's not what people would expect but it's like this is really a time for you to step into this phase of becoming the person that you have wanted to become yeah let this authentic version of you actually be seen this is what you're working on on um, in october this is the energy that is uh kind of surrounding you in october it's like this is all about gaining this, gaining this level of authenticity, living in your true self more of the time. And it's just like, you've got some clarity here. Yeah, I feel like saying, let what's important to you be the things that you value. Let that be where you put your time. Let that be where you put your focus. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's like being so laser targeted on where that focus should go. 
and what should be released what should be let go of where are there conflicts that need to be put to rest let's clarify this descendant card so we have the queen of wands yeah I love I love the uh, the queen of wands energy to go along with the energy of invitation that's coming through with the descendant card so um, this is kind of a, a little a little side note <laughs> for some of you but the queen of wands is like the spunkiest most inviting energy that's kind of like nurturing at the same time um, because she's in that nurturing energy of the queen so she kind of always makes me think of the person that's great at like hosting parties or um, kind of has a way of bringing everybody together getting everybody uh, getting everybody together so that energy paired with the invitation of the descendant it's kind of making me think of like a party sending out party invitations things like that so you may be hosting a gathering in October or you may be invited to um, some kind of celebration during this month the 12th house energy honestly could have you in the place of wanting to keep to yourself but I have to say if this opportunity pre presents itself um, some kind of social gathering a party a celebration Yeah, if this energy presents itself during October, it I feel like the advice here is, is is to show up and show up as this version of yourself, this new version of yourself. But it's, it's so interesting because I'm kind of hearing show up and show out. So this might be like a, a really great opportunity for you and it'll come along and you'll kind of feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to go. I'm not sure if I have the energy. I, I will feel nervous or whatever it might be. And it's like, no, this is your chance. That might even be some of um, why you might not want to participate in anything or not be social this month because you just feel so pulled into this 12th house kind of analyzing energy. But no, <laughs> no, take the opportunities, do the things, do the fun things this month interesting I'm <laughs> yeah I'm kind of like with this I'm just getting this Leo Sagittarius Aries kind of energy of the Queen of Wands um, so this could be talking about a romantic partnership because of the descendant energy that can talk about our partners or who we invite into our lives so um, this could be talking about a specific partnership with a fire sign um, or with somebody with fire sign energy um, and this could be like an opportunity to meet this person during this month because it's just it's coming through in connection with for some of you some kind of social gathering some some kind of going out and having a little bit of fun um, I will say you're very appealing in the month of October you're you're looking very attractive so um, this this really might all be tied together because there's a very charismatic and attractive energy coming from this pile so I do think you're going to be in um, in the mode of attracting potential romantic partners if that's what you are interested in let's pull a couple more tarot cards just to see if there's any more messages that want to come out for you before we get into your um, advice just saw the death card as I'm shuffling so yeah um, transformation a transformative energy present in October a choice <laughs> um, we were talking about the two of Pentacles representing a choice um, a decision you be you kind of getting to this place where you're laser focused we have the two of swords here um, that is confirmation of that <laughs> Ten of Pentacles, the Moon, and the Tower. Okay. Um, I think we got the energy pretty, pretty well because a lot of this is a, a reiterated message, but I love the confirmation. Um, a lot of you are coming to the end of a cycle on something, and it really does help you 
um, when you gain this clarity, when you get laser focused, I want to look at the bottom of the deck, the Empress. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like you're gaining some kind of clarity in October that is allowing you to be more focused. Um, I almost want to say more organized. And the reason that this clarity is being gained is because cycles are closing out for you. Uh, karmic cycles, karmic debts have been paid, karmic lessons have been learned. And it's like you are moving on into this next chapter. Somehow October is very significant uh, to this overall transformation. But like I was saying before, there's kind of an energy that this has to do with a longer period of time than just um, just October. I think October is when the pieces are really falling into place for you. Um, 12th house and the moon. I feel like this moon is representing the 12th house. I really do. Um, like we were talking about things that are hidden illusions, fears. Um, it's like you're releasing, you're releasing so many fears and so much confusion. Um, and that moon is just, it's just representing that all over again. Um, it, it's so funny because I said the 12th house can get kind of a bad rap. Like people don't, people don't enjoy the idea of the 12th house because it can be a tough energy to be in. I think you've already been in it, in this transformative stage, in this growth phase. And like, you know, it can be painful. Like growth is not easy, but it's so funny because, um, you have the tower card as well, which is like another card that's like, oh, people don't want to see that card coming. So I really do feel like this was a, a reiterated message. You're on your way to this um, Ten of Pentacles energy. You're on your way to this having it all, building this legacy. And um, October is just really important. It's an important stepping stone for you to get there. And I think you kind of know what it's like to have your foundation shaken that's obvious with the 12th house <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me that the tower shows up um it's really repeating that message for me <laughs> and we have it again we have the crumbling what are you clinging on to this is um this is all about moving into the next phase I feel like a lot of you, like the hard work has already been done. Um, I feel like you're right on the cusp of really being able to embody this next version of you. And whatever these last little pieces are that are like clinging on, October, October is going to clear that out. October is going to have you like so clear on exactly what you need to do and almost like exactly how you need to do it. So maybe even the processes to do these things. Um, we also have Anna, grandmother of Jesus. This is seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. You're on purpose. And <laughs> gosh, this is such a big reading. You guys, I, I'm telling you, it feels like, like, like this is, this is for a year. And that's like, it shows how much, how much growth you've done in these months leading up to October, because somehow something's clicking into place. And it's like, you really are shedding that old skin. You really are moving on to the next phase. You, you're stepping into this energy that you've been waiting to embody. And it is the divine plan. Like it's happening right as it should be. Maybe there's a little bit of impatience or a little bit of um, questioning on your part because really this is kind of coming through as like um, a reassurance that you are on track and for some of you this could be maybe this little bit of like a nervousness that we're approaching the end of the year there might have been certain goals that you set for yourself during this year and you're worried that you're not going to hit them or worried that you won't be satisfied with um, like where you made it to but no this is a really reassuring message with this Ten of Pentacles, you're on, you're right on track. Like even when it doesn't seem like it, you're right on track. Let's end this reading with um, some advice from the self care oracle. I think it's called. Um, maybe just a little something for some guidance for the month of October. Big energy for you.
what advice do you have for number one for October? Read. Okay. It was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like your guides were like, read. I don't know what. <laughs> um, yes, this can be about, I feel like for a lot of you, this is about gaining some kind of information, some kind of knowledge. Like, you see how intense this card looks? I, I'm not sure why this is striking me so um, so intensely right now, but it just feels like, um, it feels like there might have been a missing piece and like there's some research that you're doing or some research that you should be doing to kind of answer your questions. Something that you read this month might really open your eyes and make a decision clear. If there's something for some of you that you've been meaning to read, <laughs> because your guides like I'm telling you when that card when that card fell out I heard like literally like a scream like read and I feel like for some of you your guides are are pointing to like a book that you have been meaning to read or like you have a, a stack of papers or something that you need to read through and it's like they're they're redirecting you to this thing and saying like read that you have it right there read it so that's a message for some of you that it's crazy <laughs> Um, create art. So maybe this is a time for you to get creative. Um, maybe this decision has to do with the art that you want to create. Maybe this transformation or stepping into this authentic, um, place, this idea, I'm, I'm drawn back to the Hierophant card. So this idea of marching to the beat of your own drum, um, doing your own thing, this might have something to do with an artistic pursuit. Um, your guides are taking me on a little wild ride through your reading right now and uh, <laughs> really just drawing my attention. So I'm seeing here the idea of making your own rules, here the art that you're making. This can be music, this can be um, some kind of visual arts, it can be something to do with fashion, um, whatever this thing that you're interested in or pursuing. And then they're, they're dropping me at the the Ten of Pentacles. So <laughs> doing your own thing, creating what it is that you've been inspired to create, stepping into this new version of yourself. I'm seeing it as something that will be lucrative for you, something that will produce a lot of happiness and fulfillment. Ten of Pentacles energy for you. Connect with crystals. So to me, this is about earth. Um, there might be literal uh, crystals in your connection, in your connection, in your collection that you want to connect with, <laughs> you want to make a connection with. Um, and so that might be a little bit of a reminder to some of you to maybe sleep with a crystal, nothing sharp, nothing sharp, but maybe sleep with a crystal under your pillow, um, a nice tumbled stone, <laughs> um, something like that. But this can also be about getting in nature, um, kind of getting that, that earthing energy that, that we get from crystals um, by maybe walking barefoot or something like that. This really does give me connecting with earth um, vibes. And this could be because this transformation, like stepping into this new phase, sometimes it can, um, it can help us when we're grounded, um, trying to go through a change like this. It can help us to just stay grounded. But this is very um, intense energy and I have the feeling that this isn't scary. Like this doesn't feel like a scary transformation, mainly because I think you've already done most of the hard work here. Like you've already come so far on your journey and it's like something's clicking into place and something's allowing you to be a little bit more you, or you're making the decision to be a little bit more you, to make your own rules. To, to make your art, to make the money, you're, you're kind of making the decision to step into this position of power and to step into this new and this next, this evolved version of yourself, um, which is a lot, but it's like, it's been in the works. So it's, I feel like it's a relief in a way, like, um, like it's good news. I feel like a lot of you are going to be happy to hear this because you need, um, you might need a little bit of reassurance that these things are working, you know, that your vision is working. Um, 
yeah, I keep getting drawn back to that. So I'm, I'm really excited for some of you because I think this is about art that you've been wanting to create um, or some kind of project you've been wanting to do, something you've been wanting to make the time to do. And October is like, yes, you're doing it. You're stepping into this new version of yourself. The new version of yourself does that thing, um, makes time for it moves to the next phase like yeah so this is super exciting so <laughs> let me stop let me stop um yeah i think i'll leave it there for you number one thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me read your cards if you did like this reading if you resonated with any of these messages don't forget to hit the like button leave me a comment down below and hit subscribe if you feel like it and hopefully i will see you again really soon in another reading bye Hi, number two, if you were drawn to the Mercury card, this is going to be your reading. We're going to find out what's going on for you during the month of October. So let's start your reading looking at this Mercury energy. Um, Mercury is about communication, how we communicate, and also that mental energy, like how we think. So October could be a month where the lines of communication open for you or where you feel like you're more comfortable or more able to express yourself in some way. Um, what I find really interesting about this energy showing up for you is that Mercury has actually been in retrograde since September 9th, I think. Um, and I believe it'll go direct on October 2nd. So right at the beginning of October, things that may have been on hold for you, things that seemed to be blocked or stalled or um, just, just not moving. I'm trying to tap into this energy because um, I feel like it might be a lot of different scenarios, something you're waiting for, things like that, something you felt like you're sitting around waiting for. I feel like something significant in October is going to change that for you because I'm feeling like this push of energy um, moving forward, especially things involving communication or the expression of some kind of idea. Um, even contracts or deals and agreements that have been on hold, um, that might have been that that other energy I was picking up on, but even stuff like that, that like you've been waiting, like I'm waiting to hear back from so and so, or um, we can't we can't finalize this until the inspection's done, you know, like just this annoying stuff that like holds everything up. Even stuff like that, I'm just feeling this push forward here for October. And it's kind of giving me like the glimmer of hope feeling like, oh yes, this is finally going to move. Um, for some of you, you might have felt like you've lacked clarity about a situation in your life. Um, you could be kind of having that feeling intensely since the beginning of last month when Mer when mercury first went retrograde there might have been something that just felt like you like you just don't have the energy to do or you don't have the clarity to move forward on something like that but i am seeing that in october um this is kind of a time where more of that clarity starts to filter in you're either finding clarity in your own mind and clarity of thought around a particular area of your life um or you're gonna gain you're going to gain this clarity by getting some kind of information that you need in order to move forward. Um, there's a message for some of you that a, like a particular message that you've been waiting for is coming through in October. Waiting to hear back from something or someone. Um, that might be coming through in October. In October I'm also because mercury does rule Gemini and Virgo I'm kind of um, I'm being drawn to like that Gemini that June time and also um, September which which was last month so this might have something to do with something that occurred last month there was kind of a similar message referencing back to September for October in the first reading so it might be some more of that energy like um, just kind of highlighting something that took place last month or something that started last month or something that stopped last month for some of you.
could have stopped toward the beginning of last month and you're not sure what's going to happen with that or, or you're not sure if you're going to pick it back up or whatever it might be and it's like um yeah energy moving forward in october let's see um let's see what other main energies are at play for you during october for number two october 2022 okay so yeah exactly aries <laughs> exactly um this aries card says act is it focusing come on <laughs> there we go says act um this is about action this is that fiery aries energy forward movement and momentum are huge themes for you in october some of you are getting information that's going to allow you to take action on something that has felt like it was stuck or like it was stalled in some cases you might have um you might have been like waiting to get the okay waiting for something to be finalized i was picking up on this energy again but the way that this ram is like ripping out of the gate that's what it feels like it feels like there there might be something that you are right on the edge of your seat about right on the tip of your toes about if that makes any sense like you've just been waiting it's like just just let me in just put me in coach you know just just remove this barrier and i'm ready to go um that's kind of the energy i'm getting from this yeah the ball is finally starting to roll in October. I don't know why, like when I said that, then it made me think, I just said, put me in coach. I don't even know why I said that. And then now we're talking about a ball. So there might be something um, sports related that's significant going on in your life right now or um, going on in somebody's life that's really close to you. Yeah. You're really like, it's, it's like you have the desire to move. You have the desire to take action during this month. Um, let's look at when the moon will be in Aries this month because we have this Aries energy. So the, okay. So the moon is in Aries on the 9th, which is actually the full moon as well. And also on the 10th. And that's really interesting. Full moon energy and this, like this energy of something kind of blossoming or blooming, coming to fruition, um, being ready to be plucked. It's like that same energy of like, just let me go. Um, something growing to this culmination of the full moon. So yeah, the ninth and the 10th might be significant um, to you, uh, even beyond <laughs> what it will be to everyone else, because full moon energy is kind of intense for everybody, whether they pick up on it or not. So you might be experiencing something particularly interesting going on during that time. Um, something finally moving forward and it just feeling like it came full circle for you um and like you got that okay is how it's coming through um yeah i feel like the first couple of weeks of october are going to be crucial for you um and that's going to be a time of a lot of progress so this is particularly i'm looking at the second because this is when mercury goes direct through the ninth or the tenth being significant for you this might be when you you hear you hear back or um when you feel like you're so ready to move and to take action on something you get the okay to go ahead on something um yeah <laughs> let's keep going what else what other energies are present wow okay we have Pluto. Um, my card almost almost hit me in the face. So <laughs> I don't know why it jumped so high, but we really have Pluto. So I'm going to take um, the message of Pluto with even more intensity because of the way it came out of the deck. Um, and this card is about rebirth. Pluto's energy is about a rebirth. Um, so we're, we're placing high importance on that. We're placing some, some intensity on that. 
um, uh, this transformation. This is like the energy of leaving an old, um, an old form behind. And this could be an old form of yourself, but this could also be an old form of a situation. It's like it's being left behind. So um, this doesn't have to be necessarily about a transformation in you, although I do think that um, there will be a transformation in you because of this energy, but this could be leaving like an old structure behind, um, an old system behind, an old work, work situation behind. It could be something like that. Um, I feel like what's important to remember for October is that this transformation is going to happen through the action that you take. Uh, that's really important and that's really jumping out. It's almost like you are being empowered to make some sort of change. To make the decision to make that change. Interesting. Um, Yeah, I'm kind of getting the sense of like a golden opportunity or a door being opened that was once closed. That's how this is coming through. But it's like October is going to present opportunities to you. And I'm getting the vibe that acting on those opportunities and not holding back is kind of what's bringing, um, it's bringing this Pluto rebirth or this transformation. It, it's pushing it forward. Your action is going to move this forward. I'm hearing that this is odd because we don't have, we have a strong idea of transformation. So, um, some of your guides are saying that butterfly, you know, actually, okay. Yeah. I'm hearing that butterflies, butterfly symbolism is significant to you or will be significant during the month. Spirit's kind of saying that butterflies are going to serve as a reminder to you of this transformation that's like kind of taking place and of the forward momentum that you're feeling. Um, so yeah, that might be a message just for some of you, but there might, you might have a particular tie to butterflies. Um, yeah, that butterfly message is really taking me back to the Mercury energy that opened up your reading. So for some of you, butterflies are representative of some kind of message or some kind of communication. Um, and it's like you're going to be noticing butterflies everywhere. And I'm even seeing a butterfly tattoo. So um, it, it might not be like an actual butterfly that flies by that you're seeing, but it's like this... This symbolism is serving as some kind of reminder for you. It's keeping you on track and it might even be keeping you inspired because we do have this focus around action. So it might be keeping you inspired to take action. So this is just a reminder, um, a reminder to you. Um, something you're going to be very aware of in October. It's a very airy energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. I can't get off of it. Also Virgo energy because Mercury does rule Virgo also. Um, so for some of you, this communication or this, this feeling that things are gaining momentum, it could have to do with someone that falls under one of those signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Virgo. A lot of dates are popping up for you too. So the first and the 20th, and the 27th, possibly significant dates for you during October. Um, I'm going to clarify all of this energy. Um, might pause for a second because the light is kind of like trying to mess with me right now, but I don't think there's anything I can do about it. So hopefully that's not bothering you guys, but let me, um, let me see. Okay. Hopefully that helped. So, um, let's keep going. Let's clarify all of this energy here. So we're going to clarify this um, Mercury energy. Clarify Mercury, please. Okay, so we have the um, the Knight of Wands in reverse. 
that's really interesting because the Knight of Wands is all about action. Um, sometimes impulsive action that um, is even action that's not well timed and not well thought out. <laughs> Um, in reverse, the Knight of Wands can talk about delays or things that are not able to move forward as as fast as you would want or with as much haste as you would have wished them to. So that's kind of exactly what we've been talking about with this energy of things um, kind of clicking into place and starting to move forward in October. Um, yeah, so like with this Knight of Wands, I feel like... The Knight of Wands is full of passion and full of excitement, but in the reverse position, that passion may have been stalled or um, something could have been standing in the way of it being fully expressed. So this is showing me that some information you've been lacking or something that hasn't been clear to you is becoming clear in October. And I, again, I feel that energy of like, um, This is just such repeated energy from this Aries. It just feels like there's something you're so ready for, something you've been waiting for, something that like given the opportunity, given a sign that that this was um, going to move forward, you would be ready to go. Like you already have it planned out. You've already um, you've already done whatever you need to do to like prepare for it. You've already thought this through because the Knight of Wands moves so fast and in reverse I'm thinking there's something stalled here. It's the same energy of this ram kind of bursting through, ready to sprint forward, ready to go. Yeah, this is really interesting energy because um, I can feel that there could be kind of an impatience around this. Just because there's so much, fo there's just so much focused energy. There's so much... Um, there's so much vision here is how it, how it's coming through. There's so much vision and potential with whatever you've seen that there's a lot of excitement and there's just an eagerness. I think that's a better word than impatience. It's eagerness. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. I was going to clarify Aries. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess that's why we have cards flying out. Um, we have the five of cups to clarify that Aries energy. Yeah, I feel like I feel like um, something this is just such this is such interesting energy. I'm trying to to sift through what's going on here because there might be a number of um, of scenarios because this is collective energy. Um, For many of you, this, I feel like this has to do, I feel like this has to do with a person or some kind of, um, some kind of passion project. This is such, this is so weird. Um, I think it's something very personal. I feel like that's a better way to say it. It's something that feels very personal, very close to you. Um, and that could be a, a, a passion project of yours, something that you're really passionate about, a hobby that you've been pursuing. I kind of feel like it's, it's this feeling of like this, the fire has been lit inside of you. Um, the spark of passion is there. And now it's about moving forward to this next, um, this next phase, this next level. So it could Yeah, it, it, this could have been happening on various levels for a while. It's like, I just feel this buildup of energy with nowhere for it to go. Um, and that could be for a number of reasons, external factors, it could be internal factors, but it's like something feels like it's falling into place and that creative energy or that passionate energy is going to find a place to land. Um, so I just feel like the blocks are being removed. Um, even if I, I feel like saying, even if this hasn't felt like a block per se, it could have just felt more like, 
a lack of motivation or like too many things vying for your attention at the same time. And it's kind of been creating this sense of confusion or it could have been um, that there's just one little missing piece that's kind of preventing this from moving forward. So I see progress being made in that area in October. Um, for those of you where this is concerning a relationship and it's like the communication has been lacking or the communication has been cut off completely, that could start to change in October, especially if you're taking action toward the things that you feel passionate about. I feel like it's almost like a chain reaction. This could be a way of manifesting more of what you want to see in your life because I just feel like um, something about the action you take is is influencing this and, and it is kind of getting getting things moving forward, getting into this action oriented energy. And this could be that you are taking action toward your uh, your ambitions, your goals. You are maybe deciding that you don't want to stand on the sidelines anymore and you have this eagerness to move forward. I want to look more at this Five of Cups because I was like, I was just so caught up. Um, I was so caught up in this energy of the Knight of Wands as a clarifier here. Um, but the five of cups flew out of the deck. So, <laughs> so we, we had to, we had to pause. Um, this five of cups energy just feels like leaving the past in the past and moving on. Um, even if things haven't gone your way in the past, it's like October is, is there's something different about it? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. There's something different. Um, it's like new opportunities are being presented to you during this month of October and kind of the only the only way to not see or to not recognize those new opportunities would be to be too focused on what's been lost or on what hasn't worked out in the past because there may have been a delay or a stall in energy around some area of your life and it might even kind of catch you off guard when these doors start to open um I have had an experience like that in my life recently where it's like things start to happen that you wanted to happen, but because there was some part of you that really didn't believe you were gonna get there, when the door starts to open, it's like, wow, am I ready to step through that door? I like I never I didn't think that would actually happen so it can feel a little overwhelming if that feeling comes up in you during October as these opportunities start to present themselves remember that your advice here is to act so to me that's saying even if it does feel a little uncomfortable even if there's a bit of a fearful energy there it's like it's like a nervous excitement kind of um, even if that rises up, still act, take that action. Um, when you get the go ahead, go, because this is about making progress. This is about leaving that old stuff behind, even if you thought it was going to be clinging to you for the rest of forever. Even if that was your, um, on some level, your expectation, when that stuff starts to fall away and you feel free to go, um, you, you've just got to go. You've just got to go. And, and it is, it's nervous excitement. It's good excitement. It's, it's okay. Um, yeah, your guides are saying, <laughs> don't waste any time telling old stories or like thinking that things will not work out the same way they didn't work out in the past. Because October is a time for you to move and it's a time to usher in the new. It's a time to let that energy flow. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to, um, to see. I feel like it's time for you to see those plans that you've had, like in your mind, see them come to life, to act, to move. So it's like, it's time to move the plans that were kind of on the back burner in some cases, I feel like, kind of move them to an upfront position um, because what has been stalled is now starting to move. So it's okay to rotate. Whatever got put on the back burner, rotate it into the focus now because it's the focus. Uh, it's time to move. As I said that, I'm like, is that literal? Like, is, for some of you, is that literal? Is it literally time for you to physically move? Um, 
because I could see having that nervous excitement uh, around doing something like that, making that move. Um, yeah, I just want to say for some of you, if there's an area where you've kind of felt like you failed in the past and you might be a little hesitant to try it again, it's this is really kind of a message to leave the past failure in the past where it belongs and to act now because the action that you choose to take right now is going to be different than whatever was previously done um you might meet new people that you didn't meet the last time you tried this you know you might get new information that you didn't have the last time you tried this um you you might even it might be as simple as and this isn't easy, but I guess it's a simple concept. It might even be that you've kind of discovered this new sense of bravery in yourself. You have this new sense of confidence or you have this new um, motivation, this new determination. So things aren't going to turn out the same way that they did in the past because you, you're, you're kind of new. You're approaching this in a new way. You're looking at it in a new way. So don't hesitate to act because of something that happened in the past. It has no bearing um, on what's gonna go on in the future and what's going on in the month of October. Let's clarify this Pluto energy. We have the Magician in the reverse. Ooh, interesting. Um, the, the Magician in reverse can show that we are kind of exploring um, what we want to manifest, but we aren't taking action just yet. Um, so kind of like an internal, an internal job um, and not a whole lot of action. Or the opportunity hasn't presented itself yet because it's, um, it's a little interesting. This is a repeated, this is a repeated message with this idea of something being held back. Um, so whatever that reason is, if it's like you're waiting to hear back from something, you're waiting on someone, you're waiting for, for whatever it is, the magician showing up in reverse is giving me those same kind of vibes that something was stalled. Um, this can even be sometimes belief is stalled. Um, the belief wasn't all the way there. Um, we felt a little scared to, to make the changes that we needed to. This is coming up with this Pluto rebirth card. So this can be about uh, manifesting a huge change in ourselves. Um, I'm so drawn to, because <laughs> we have the Aries, um, the Aries symbol on the bottom of this card, which some people do associate the magician with Aries. Um, and others would say more Gemini Virgo energy, but how weird is that? Because we actually have Mercury, which rules Gemini Virgo and we have Aries. Wow. I don't know what's going on <laughs> here. Number two, but it, yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of blowing my mind a little bit. I feel like, um, There's so much energy of transformation that was coming through even in reading one. And I feel like this is, wow, like a, a huge theme for the collective because I'm just seeing that here. And I just want to say there's, um, you've got a lot to do. And I'm not saying that you have to do it all in October because it's not coming through like that. It's just October is going to be really important in terms of moving things forward. Um, getting that information that you needed, having that confidence, finding that belief in yourself to get out there and to do the thing that is is causing the um, the the Pluto rebirth. It's causing that transformation or that change in you. The magician has everything that he needs to create whatever he wants. Um, sometimes, in reverse, the magician might doubt that. Um, this could be because of all the other energy that I'm picking up on here. It's like, it might not be even self doubt for some of you. There could be that, or there could be a little bit of that, but it might be just circumstances haven't lined up. And now circumstances are lining up because there's this, um, this feeling of really, really needing to go, needing to, to push forward, wanting to having this passionate desire to, to move forward. Come back here. <laughs> okay, let's see. 
let's see what what else is going on here Ooh, messages for number two please kind of having a, um, another message come through. But I don't know what this card is yet, so I don't know if it's tied to it. I'm gonna say it, I'll say it before, because I'm kind of hearing that it's like, um, this is kind of this feeling of you are not going to see this transformation in yourself until you take some sort of action. So there really might be a little bit of fear about doing something, about putting yourself out there in some way. But um, it, it's coming through like, this is how you get your next instructions. This is how you will receive your next message, your next inspiration. Taking that first step, even if it's a tentative step because you don't know exactly where it's gonna lead. It's like, just take the action. It's really going to help to fuel this transformation um, that you're making. Um, I'm also hearing that for some of you, these are spiritual messages. These are, um, this feels like direct communication with the divine. So you might be more tapped in in that way during, uh, in, um, October, being able to hear directly from your guides or hearing from your angels, because it does feel like some communication could be coming through as in clarity. So this might be about a spiritual communication that you're receiving, and it's really helping you to take this action, to take this next step. And this action that you're taking, this action is like crucial to, um, this transformative energy that's going on here. We have the three of wands. These are plans that, um, I feel like you've put in place and waited for the three of wands. He's, he's waiting. He's waiting for, um, some people say waiting for his ships to come in. Ace of swords. Um, he's waiting. He's anticipating. And that's, that's what it does feel like something got, something got stalled or there might've been a delay, a time period where, um, where you had to wait to see what would happen. We are having um, clarity with the Ace of Swords, new ideas, <laughs> um, kind of Mercury energy in a nutshell. So really interesting that that came out. A lot of air energy again. Um, we have the Five of Wands and we also have the High Priestess. Wow. Bottom of the deck, the Lovers. <laughs> Um, if this is about a relationship, uh, I think you'd know if it is, this doesn't feel like it's something new. It feels like something that might've had a stall or a delay. Um, and we were talking about communication, maybe coming in new communication again, showing up with the ace of swords, especially I would say if there's been some sort of conflict in this, um, in this relationship or some kind of miscommunication, some kind of not understanding each other, not being on the same page. It feels like these are the things that are being discussed and resolved. And this is what's getting this action to move forward. Um, I, I should clarify that because it only makes sense in my head. I think I'm talking about this Aries energy, this action of Aries energy. That's what moves this forward. Um, if this is about a relationship, clearing up Clearing the air, we'll say it like that, clearing the air, having this new communication, something you've been waiting for. The High Priestess, um, very intuitive energy, but I think that's that energy that was coming through for Mercury, um, where I was getting this message about, it, it could be a spiritual, um, like a spiritual message that you're receiving, spiritual communication. The High Priestess is highly intuitive um, and kind of, guards over that area that's right between the veil of the the seen and the unseen the the known and the unknown world so this is like you tapping into your intuition uh, making connections with your guides receiving this information that might allow you to take action on something that maybe it has been stalled because you're not clear or maybe it's been stalled because you didn't have the communication but it just feels like you're getting more information and this could be information from your guides from your angels from from the divine and this can also be information from people in your life um i don't i feel like i went on a tangent and <laughs> i don't know if i said everything i wanted to say um 
there's just so there's so much growth here and I just I feel so much excitement I'm feeling that this is this is really exciting energy for you this is something you've been waiting for I love the lover's energy showing up for you I really do now yes romantic partnership also business partnership um, choices because this could be like maybe action wasn't being taken because no choice was being made so because the lovers represents choice this could be about receiving some kind of information that helps you to make a choice whether that's again spiritually or um, someone in your life giving you some information but it, it feels it feels exciting it feels like movement forward that you've been really wanting and really waiting for I love it let's Pull some oracle cards. What do we have for number two for October? Why did your guides just tell me to look under the lovers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the chariot. The, the forward momentum, um, this feeling of wanting to burst burst forward and, and, and see the progress. Your guides really wanted you to see that. Um, this might be because there's some encouragement that, that like you, maybe you could use some encouragement. Like, yes, this is going to move forward. You're making progress. Just continue to take action. Continue to work at this. You've got this. You're golden. I don't know because I feel like we have said that and said that and said that, but your guides are like, no, I will not let this go. <laughs> Look under the lovers. Um, that's funny. Also kind of repeated, um, repeated imagery here. Here we have the, the angel here, blessing, you know, it, the, we have the two, the two. The, am I making any sense here? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I've gone, I've gone goofy on you. Um, your guides are just too much. So yeah, I feel like there is something repeated here. I feel like there might be a message of a blessed union for some of you. Um, but I, I see this couple, um, this couple. So this could be about a partnership, romantic or otherwise. Yeah, your guides kind of Kind of blew my mind a little bit. Okay, let's see what messages we have. What messages do you have for number two? Wow. Messages for number two, please. Um, the age of light. So you've been training for this for lifetimes. Wow, you guys, this is, um, your guides want to love on you a lot today. So I don't know if it's like, you just need this encouragement. Um, it's a really sweet energy, but there's really this feeling of like, you can do this. Um, just, just keep going. It, something might've gotten a little off. It could just even be your energy's off. Like you just haven't been feeling it or you haven't been motivated. You can't stay focused. Uh, there's a lot of encouragement that this is going to, uh, to move forward. We have keepers of the earth. You are not alone. <laughs> Your ancestors stand beside you. This is so sweet. I love your guides. Um, and starseed, what lights you up? So if you identify as a starseed, um, this would be major confirmation for you that this message is for you. Um, I feel like a lot of you are wanting to bring some kind of light into the world, wanting to move forward in a way that that kind of brings more of that light into your life. And I'm getting that message just repeatedly here with Age of Light, the star seed. Like you're you're um I feel like your guides want you to know that you're on the right track, even if something got in your way or even if things keep getting in your way. Uh, it might just feel like you keep getting knocked down to have to get back up to get knocked down, to have to get back up. And it's like, your guides are telling you, it's like, you're, you're golden here. It's, it's fine. It might be difficult, but you are going through the journey that you need to, and things are going to start to unlock. I feel like you're going to see some of that in October. You're going to see this, um, 
you're going to see this start to unfold in October. You're going to see some forward momentum. Let's wrap up your reading with some advice. I like these cards because they're just straightforward. This is a self-care oracle. They're, they're very straightforward, very to the point. Sometimes we can pull out um, a little bit more of a, a mystical message, but they really um, are, are straightforward with advice. Wow. Lots of advice. Alone time. Okay, so you might need to recharge. I'm feeling like some of you are, are introverts and you really do recharge by being alone. Um, so that might be crucial to you as you are navigating all of this. We have family. Wow. Okay, interesting. Alone time and family. This could be um, this could be a message of balancing the amount of time you're spending around other people and in their energy and the amount of time that you are able to kind of recharge on your own. This can also, to me, refer to it being important to be alone with um people who are close to you. So this doesn't have to be that you are completely on your own, but you're with really supportive people. So this might be just, just having that quality time with very supportive people during October. So a sign that you're going to have a lot of that love and support and you, that you're also gonna have a minute to yourself. Um, dream journal. <laughs> you guys are getting, <laughs> I was gonna say, you guys are getting all the, like you're getting messages in October and then you know, my eyes land back on the Mercury card. Yeah, you're getting messages. That's that's what came through with that card. You are going to be getting messages. This is a sign that for a lot of you, some of these really important messages are going to be coming through in the form of dreams. Keep a journal by your bed because you know what happens. You wake up, you think you remember. Five minutes later, you don't even know what the dream was. So write it down. As soon as you wake up, write down what happened because these messages that are coming through in your dreams are going to be really important to you. Dance. This is like a cut loose kind of card. Um, I felt like this this feeling of shaking off the energy. So um, that might be what that dance card is about. And you might do that literally by dancing. Or this could just be like um, kind of the need to just move your body. Just shake it off. Shake it up um, a little bit. But yeah, it's giving me this feeling of, of cutting loose. Um, of not worrying uh, that this isn't going to work out. That this this forward momentum isn't going to happen because it is happening. Um, yeah, have some fun. Have some fun during October. I do think October is going to be fun for you because things you've been waiting on, like things you've been waiting for, it could even be that you've like, you've been waiting for October and you're so excited, like you're ready to go. There's something you really want to do this month and you're ready to go. It could be that kind of energy. And it's like coming through as this excitement, as this um, cutting free, cutting loose um, kind of vibe with this dancing energy, very free spirited energy. Um, and again, action oriented. So, so there's a lot of movement here. This might even be an indication just to move your body. Like, um, yeah, this, this might be about like literally dancing or starting some kind of new exercise program or something that just moves your body and just shakes up the energy. So that, that's the advice that your guides had for you for October. They actually came through with a whole bunch of advice for you guys. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Number two, thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me read your cards. If you did enjoy this reading, if you resonated with any of these messages, don't forget to like the video, leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. And hopefully I will see you again in another reading really soon. Bye. Hi, number three, if you were drawn to the moon card, this is gonna be your reading. We're gonna be looking at your month ahead for October, 2022. So let's start your reading by looking at this moon energy in a little bit more depth. I will say, um, before we really get into it, you guys, it gets so dark so early now. And so now it's getting dark. So we're gonna have like a really cozy, um, a little a cozy reading because <laughs> we're losing light but um yeah let's look at let's look at this this moon card so the moon is about our emotions and um it can also speak about the emotional factors that are driving situations in our lives so this moon energy being a main theme for you during october is it's kind of reminding you to pay attention to your emotions and your emotional responses to the events that you encounter this month. Don't discount your feelings or 
allow your emotions, even your intuition to be overshadowed this month, really anytime, but um, not in October. Okay, sorry about that. I had to turn a light on. It's just too dark. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, I'm really getting a feeling that your guides are reminding you uh, that just because emotions can't be seen um, or just because our emotions don't always seem logical or don't always seem logical to everyone else, uh, that doesn't mean that they aren't valid. So you're being asked to look at what's beneath the surface and that can be looking into your own feelings regarding a situation in your life, but it could also mean noticing and tapping into the emotions of someone else in your life during the month of October. Um, this is giving me soul searching vibes, kind of this energy of digging deeper into why you feel the way that you do or what your emotional needs are in any given situation and if those needs are being met. Looking at this, I'm kind of reminded, I'm kind of reminded of like the fact that from our vantage point on earth, the sun and the moon appear to be like the same size, even though the moon is actually a lot smaller. Um, but it's our perspective that, that makes the difference. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence. It's, it's kind of a reminder to us that like the unseen, the emotional, the feeling aspects of life, um, everything that this moon energy represents, even though these things aren't tangible, they are equally as important, if not sometimes even more important than the things that we can, um, that we can actually touch or the things that that tend to grab our attention more easily, things that might have that spotlight of the sun shining directly on them. So October might be a time to slow down a little bit, slow down enough to be able to pick up on some of these emotional nuances. Um, you might even find that you're a little bit more sensitive to energies during this month. Um, and that's all right because you're tapped in. So you might feel like you're, your intuitive uh, abilities are heightened during October. I'm kind of picking up on like, for some of you, wow, I just got this, <laughs> I just got this excited vibe around like the Halloween season. So this might be something that you're really looking forward to. And I just feel like you being really tapped in during this time and you're kind of excited or something. I just got this really excited energy. So it might even be cool for you that you're kind of experiencing um, like a heightened intuition. It's sort of giving me like the veil is lifted kind of vibes. Um, almost high priestess vibes and like I don't, I feel like you're like, you've got kind of a little mystical thing going on, um, in October that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it, you're, you're more tapped in. That's where I, where I got lost <laughs> with it. Cause that energy just came out of nowhere, but yeah, it, it's like, you're, um, you're more intuitive. Um, you are more sensitive to energies during this month. It feels like, so, you know, always there's a little bit of, of guidance. If you are feeling extremely sensitive at any point to, to kind of maybe limit your exposure to problematic people, um, to clear your energy, maybe use crystals, burn some sage, do whatever it is you do to kind of recenter yourself, because this can, this can be a time of, um, increased, awareness, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, I feel like this moon energy is so important to you this month that it might be worth your time to pay attention to what sign the moon is on in any given day. Um, so you can like, you can look that up online or you can have download an app or something on your phone that can tell you that. And the reason I say this is because I feel like um, kind of knowing the sign that the moon is in, it might help provide some sort of clarity to you about what energies you're trying to sift through on the, on that day. Um, 
kind of understand the feelings that you're having or the things you're picking up on because I think the the moon sign might give you a little bit of guidance. So if that is something that that seems like it makes sense to you, definitely look into doing that because it just might help. Um, sometimes when we have a, like, a, like a, a reason, a label, it helps to um, find a slot for the energies that we're feeling and you are going to be more tapped in. So it's, it's kind of the perfect time. Um, your guides are also saying to pay attention to your own moon sign this month to gain clarity about um, the unspoken or the more subconscious factors that are driving you. So looking into and maybe watching readings um, on your moon sign. Interesting. Okay. Um, we have really strong cancer energy coming through with this moon energy. And we also have the, the number 19 on this moon card. This is card 19. Um, which interestingly enough is the number that corresponds to the sun card in the major arcana. So again, it's kind of another reference to the sun or to the things that are seen. But the emphasis is being placed on the unseen here. Um, because it's almost like the sun, if, if this 19 is representing the sun, it's like it's being moved off to the side. We're focused on this moon energy. So this is really telling me there's a focus being placed on your emotions, on your feelings, um, on, on how, how you're feeling and processing things this month and kind of a message to not get, um, not get overly wrapped up in the things that grab your attention most easily because they might not necessarily be the things that are most important for you to have your focus on. Um, the 19th may also be an important date for you to keep in mind. And since, since we are being guided to pay attention to what sign the moon is on, um, let me look and see. On the 19th, the moon is in Leo. So that might be significant. Um, there might be some attention being given to the self there with that Leo energy. Um, and that Cancer energy is such a nurturing energy that I kind of feel like there's there's some guidance to shift into a more nurturing place within yourself to take some time to listen to your inner voice. Um, because the world is very, very loud. <laughs> the world can get really loud and it's it's constantly trying to get our attention with work, with school, with kids and partners and, and family commitments, day-to-day -day responsibilities. Um, all of that can get really loud and all of those things can take center stage. But this month you're being asked to kind of let your inner world take center stage um, a little bit more. Um, and also to trust the heck out of your intuition. Like that message, um, is coming through so loud and clear. Your intuitive knowing about the events that are going to take place in October as you're moving through the month, you don't necessarily have to have any clue what's happening, but I just feel like for a lot of you, you're going to be presented with situations where you just kind of have a feeling and let that be enough. <laughs> it's just like, you know, trust that feeling. You have it for a reason. And you can definitely trust that feeling in October. You are tapped in. Let's see what other energies are at play for you in October. Number three. So we have Vesta. Interesting. I, so far, this energy for you, <laughs> number three, um, is super calm and almost, almost cozy. Oh, that's kind of weird because, <laughs> um, because we were talking about the lighting and the cozy vibes, but yeah, it's, it's almost cozy. I kind of, I, I love that because there's an element of slowing down and, and drawing inward. Vesta talks about home. So this can literally be referring to the place that you call home, but this can also be that inner world that we were talking about. 
um, that true sense of home that kind of resides within you. The Vesta energy is really, um, it's showing me the importance of everything we discussed while we were talking about the moon. Because Vesta calls us to share ourselves, to share our gifts for the, the benefit of others, but it also reminds us that in the process of keeping that fire burning, um, it's also imp important not to burn ourselves up or burn ourselves out. So this is actually a perfect tie-in and it's, um, it's making the moon energy make so much more sense to me because Vesta reminds us that our happiness, our joy, our suffering, all of that matters as much as anyone else's. Um, I just, it feels like a lot of you are um, very, very selfless and there might be a time for you to be a little bit selfish in October. Take some time for yourself, make some space for yourself, make sure your needs are being met in every situation that you're engaging in, in, in the month of October, just start to notice that. Um, any of these deeper feelings that may have been kind of covered up in an effort for you to just cope with daily life or kind of that feeling of like doing what you have to do to get through the day, not necessarily having the time or having the space to care for yourself emotionally, to feed yourself on a deep soul level. These issues are the kind of thing that's being brought to the forefront during October. And the word that um, keeps coming to mind is restorative. October is a time for you to restore. Yeah. It's like I'm getting, um, it's it, tap in and restore as, as key words almost for you. So this is a time for you to really tap in. This is a time you're going to be tapped in, but you're also restoring yourself, restoring your energy, um, caring for yourself. For some of you, you're at the center of your household. You're the center of your home. You're the center of your friend group, um, or you're in some kind of position where things orbit around you. There's a lot of people um, who who want your attention or, um, yeah, I don't really know how to put this, but this just feels like almost like a drain to your energy at times. And this is a time for you to really rebuild that. Uh, this this even could have to do with you being a business owner, being in a position of authority. Even if it's, even if it just has to do with kind of stepping into an empowered position in your life, but it's really referencing this energy where you're the center. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Whatever it is you're at the center of, um, I feel like this is particularly relevant for those of you who are building a community of some kind um, and you're kind of at the center of that. So this, this energy of Vesta is about finding that balance between giving yourself um, your energy, your attention, your love and care, but finding the time to let some of that, um, let some of that energy filter out the way that it has been. This is, <laughs> this is very interesting energy. I can feel it. I'm not sure if I can say it. Um, this just, it feels like a lot of you are, are very caring people. You're caretakers. You might be caretaking um, for other people, but you're, you're at least caring for um, something that you want to build, something that you want to grow. You're keeping some kind of fire alive. This is what Vesta talks about, keeping that fire burning. And I think for a lot of you, there are even people around you that depend on that fire. So this is like just this energy of pulling inward a little bit more, checking in with your emotional uh, needs, checking in with what you need from any situation, because oftentimes I think you're worried about what other people need and you're giving of yourself. It's beautiful. Like it's, and it's, it's an absolute 
absolutely beautiful energy and it's not something to be lost um, that's kind of where I was going with that convoluted <laughs> that convoluted message that was coming out but that isn't to be lost this is just saying um, direct that energy inward as well and check in with yourself and make sure that this situation is meeting your emotional needs because um, you're always so so willing and able to meet other people's emotional needs make sure you are cared for um, this card really talks about not burning yourself up for another person's cause <laughs> so October might be a time to evaluate how you truly feel about some of the things that you're pouring your energy into like for instance for some of you this might be your job is your job making you happy um, or are you having more of the feeling like you're building somebody else's dream and somebody else's future rather than your own? And it doesn't have to be a job, but um, it's just an example to kind of get the wheels turning because there might be areas of your life, relationships in your life where you, you need to kind of take the time to just evaluate um, if that's really making you happy, if that's really meeting all of your needs. Yeah, you really apply that that question to areas of your life because that's that's kind of how this message is coming through. Are you being emotionally satisfied and fulfilled by the things that you're devoting the majority of your time to? Because it might be a matter of switching up what you're devoting your time to. Um, share yourself and share your love, but don't sacrifice yourself because your happiness and your well-being is important. And that's being highlighted this month. Um beyond that kind of evaluating and questioning vesta is about the home um it's about the comforts that we find there so i do feel like your attention is being directed more toward these comforts and that nurturing energy um and that nurturing feeling of the home this can be a time um for some of you where you are moving um where you're setting up a new space. Sorry, I was trying to get your card. Um, you might be setting up a new space for yourself. Um, it, it just might be a time that you're at home a little bit more and you're really enjoying that time, maybe even enjoying some time to yourself or some peaceful time. We also have the second house coming out. This is Taurus energy. Um, and again, a house that deals with our our resources but also with our feelings and our emotions so again back to that moon energy um for some of you the main energy showing up for you in october have to do specifically with your work your job your business the way you provide for yourself that was already kind of coming through the second house energy solidified that for me um so there might be some kind of decision that you're making regarding your finances or your work situation where I just feel like you're asking yourself, is this making me happy? Do I feel fulfilled with this um, current work? In some cases, um, you might be questioning whether the material abundance that this, this job provides is worth the emotional toll that the situation has been taking on you. So that might be a question that you're, um, that you're asking. Um, this doesn't always have to be that something in your life is not meeting your needs, but this is about you um, tuning into the inner voice and maybe slowing down a little bit, pulling in a little bit. I feel like getting cozy. I feel like saying that. I feel like <laughs> there's something really cozy um, about the month for you. There's something very nurturing about it. So this is like you're just taking care of yourself. Um yeah, I'm kind of seeing like just more nourishing activities that, that you feel you're just feeling called to take care of yourself. Even if that's just like brewing your favorite cup of tea or something like that and just treating yourself to um, like a nice warm drink, something like that. But there really is this energy. This evaluation doesn't have to be that you're coming up with um, you're coming up with negative responses. It doesn't have to be that. It can be that you're just asking yourself, what would make me more happy? What would put me at more ease? You know, that kind of thing. Just really feeling into that emotional um, side of yourself. Some of you are working from home um, or wish to be working from home. And I think some of this tapping into 
uh, more of the emotions you're feeling behind whatever kind of work situation you have going on right now to kind of help you move closer to what you actually truly desire. Okay, because this, um, this could be that you're desiring to make a living from something that feels more cohesive to you or something that feels more like you're able to be your true self. For others of you, I think this does, I think this might have to do with your work-life balance um, and finding a better separation between home life and work life because it can take an emotional toll on you when um, there's not a clear distinction there. And if you're working from home, the lines may have become a little bit blurred. So this is just an emotional check-in or this is potentially, like I was saying, making space for yourself. This might be literally making space for you to do your work versus like your sleep because <laughs> it might be that these areas have gotten merged and like the energy is a little off. So it it's like this is a, a time for you to check in with yourself and to find these little areas, these little tweaks that you can um, make to just bring more peace, more harmony, um, more emotional stability into your life. It feels really, really comforting. I, I have to say that. Um, The second house also talks about our relationship with our own body. So again, I'm getting that self-care vibe um, here, that nurturing vibe, maybe even kind of the realization that some um, physical ailment that you've been experiencing has an emotional tie-in. There's like an emotional issue in your life that might be causing that issue to manifest. And this is like, I feel like that's that's a really... Um, insightful discovery to make so that might be kind of exciting to you to kind of it sounds odd but you know sometimes we just want to know like what's going on and then you could you could figure out that something in your life that's not really making you happy is kind of showing up this other way trying to get your attention um, I do see October is going to be an abundant month for you even if that abundance doesn't necessarily pour in during the month of October um, which for some of you it definitely will um, but the groundwork is being laid anyway um, for more abundance, for more fulfillment to flow to you. Some of you are, are starting to believe during this month or you're starting to see evidence that you can be emotionally fulfilled and materially abundant at the same time. And I feel like this is huge. Um, you might be starting to see success in like a home business or you might even find yourself in this place where you're able to push past the guilt that you might have felt at one time for charging what your products or what your services are actually worth because um, kind of the message I'm seeing here is you should be compensated for the energy that you are expending. So some of you are raising prices or you're, you're like coming to terms with the fact that like what you have to offer is good. It's worth it. And I feel like you're gaining more confidence around it. Um, yeah. I, I, there's a message coming through for some of you that some of you are kind of like reconciling your more spiritual side with your desire to be materially successful. Um, and that could have been difficult for you in the past, but I feel like that balance is coming into the scenario in October. Um, so yeah, like if you have felt like you offer some sort of service and you don't really want to charge people for that service or, um, maybe you've had some hangups, like it's, it's not spiritually okay for me to charge for this. Something like that for some of you is coming through and it's like, you are really, um, you're starting to see that you are able to have this energy exchange. And yes, this is a message just for some of you. So this might not resonate for all of you. This is a general reading, but that message is coming through so strong that, um, I do want to put that out there. Like some of you might think that, um, that you have to give, you have to give all your stuff away for free. That this is what, this is the same message that was coming out, um, with the Vesta card, because this is about like not burning yourself out in the process of trying to fuel someone else's dream or trying to help someone. So making sure that 
you're getting what you need as well because you deserve to be uh, fulfilled on all levels emotionally spiritually materially you deserve that fulfillment on all levels so um yeah you can give but you, you also are, are working on being able to receive and, and getting what it is that you deserve being seen for what you're doing and taking that time for yourself as well um Overall, I'm, I'm getting the message that you, you don't have to put your desires or your emotions on, on the back burner in order to be successful. Um, there's a way to incorporate all parts of yourself. There's a way to incorporate the spiritual side and the, um, the boss side and the emotional side and the tough side and all of that can, can all live here together. And you don't have to give up on any part of yourself to make like to make a one dream come true you don't have to give up on the other <clears throat> i hope that makes sense for some of you so let's clarify this energy i want to start with that moon energy and see what we have here clarify the moon <clears throat> so we have the knight of swords clarifying that moon energy um the knight of swords is very ambitious energy um, you can think of the Knight of Swords as somebody who is on a mission. Like, um, swords are about ideas and communication as well. So there might be a need or a desire to speak up and to let your voice be heard about whatever issues are coming to the surface with this moon energy. Um, I feel like for a lot of you, conversations that have needed to be had for a while are finally happening in October. Um... I just feel like if something's bothering you, uh, if if this if this is um, kind of presenting itself as a time for you to speak up, if you're gonna, it just feels like you're gonna be feeling that energy. You're going to have this desire to speak up, um, to say something, to communicate. Um, For some of you, another very odd message is <laughs> very interesting. Um, for some of you, there's a partner or a boss. And partner can be romantic or otherwise because I meant romantic. But when I said that, this could be a business partner um, that you need to have a conversation with. <laughs> I, I will say this. The message that's coming through it, it definitely isn't for everyone but for some of you it, I feel like you're gonna be asking for a raise um, or a promotion or asking for a situation that can provide more flexibility in your life something that's gonna help with your work-life balance and that's like what we've been talking about before um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be work-life balance, but there's something that it's like you're, you're noticing you need to find a little bit more balance in that place. And if there's something you need to speak up about or something you need to ask for from someone else in order to get that accomplished, that's the energy you're in in the month of October. I feel like you're solving problems in the month of October. Like you're, you're really tapping into like what's not working and you're going to fix it. <laughs> you're going to make the tweak. And I'm feeling like it's a... Like there might be a small little tweak that will make a situation um, more profitable for you or more enjoyable for you or um, more balanced for you. Um, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself, though. Your feelings and your opinions are valid. That's what we were picking up with um, with the moon energy. If you feel something, say something. That's how it's coming through. And like being brave enough to step into this Knight of Swords energy is what's going to kind of help you achieve more harmony and more emotional balance. So it, it is going to be worth it. Um, let's clarify this Vesta energy. So we had temperance come out in reverse. Um, temperance in reverse is a sign that we've kind of been sensing that something was off. We sensed that something was out of balance. Um, because this is clarifying Vesta, this could be something out of balance in your home life um, 
or it could be that you're you feel like you're giving too much of yourself in a particular area of your life so this is talking about that balance being restored there's that word again restorative <laughs> that restorative vibe so it's like balance is being restored in october you're starting to find the key um to bring things back into alignment it's really interesting how that temperance energy is coming through. I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting, like this does show me something out of balance, but it feels like you've identified what it is or you're identifying that in October. Um, and it, it also, like I said in the beginning, it just feels like you've had a sense about this. It might've been that you didn't know how to bring it into balance before, but it's like you've already, um, you've already known you've, that's what temperance in reverse says. It's like, you've already been sensing that something's not, not quite working. Something needs to change or you need to um, say something, <laughs> say something to someone about something. <laughs> if that, if that makes any sense, that could be a romantic partner. It could be a boss. Um, it could be even a roommate. Let's clarify the second house. Is the second house here? Wow. We have the Four of Pentacles. That is interesting because that's another card um, that talks about our our resources. The Four of Pentacles can be viewed a couple of different ways. Um, so it can talk about saving money and being very responsible with the resources we have. So you might be, for instance, thinking about starting a new job or making some kind of change, maybe um, for a lot of you, I feel like this is a home business, but it doesn't have to be a home business. It just keeps coming through that way. So it could be that you are um, thinking about making this transition, maybe changing the way that you make money. So it really would be, um, it would be responsible. It would be the responsible thing to do to have some savings. Um, some of you, this might be a physical move as well. That Vesta card. That can be a, a physical move, a new home, calling a new place home. Um, that could be why that came through. And again, this, these are events in your life where you kind of save money or you might be a little bit more frugal um, because you're saving up for the move or because you want to have a little more in savings before you um, kind of transition to to your next project, or your next phase, your next job, whatever it might be. So this is kind of the energy of being... Um, being prudent, being responsible. Um, this might be where your focus is for a particular reason in October. It's something you're saving for, something you're being financially responsible about, uh, being very mindful of those spending habits. On the flip side, the Four of Pentacles um, can sometimes represent a scarcity mindset so the advice here is really to believe um believe that you're going to be provided for in your new venture if that message is resonating for you then i feel like the message from this four of pentacles is a little bit different of course save be responsible but this because it does come with this um this connection to scarcity mindset this can also be that you're a little bit fearful about making this move because you're not sure if you're going to be able to support yourself with this new venture or um, move. Maybe you're moving to something that doesn't pay quite as well and, and you're a little worried about that. And this is really a message um, to step out of that, that mindset that this won't work out for you and really take the leap because it, what, it look, what it's looking like to me is there's abundance around the corner and it might take a little bit of bravery in order to realize that but there is abundance and, and the belief that you will be provided for that this will work out is crucial right now for you. Um, I feel like a lot of you are in a, in a work situation that's emotion, emotionally straining or draining to you. Um, yeah. I feel like if that resonates, I'm just, I'm kind of seeing a course of action here. And I think this is, this is becoming clear to you in October. So it might be that you are just putting some money in savings because there's something you want to move on to or something you'd like to move away from. And this is just a month where you're really focused on that. 
let's see what else we can get. Look at some tarot messages. Some more tarot messages, I should say, to kind of clarify some of what we're seeing here. Get some more insight for the month of October. What do we have for number three for October? We have the Empress. <laughs> abundance is that not what we were just talking about abundance so yes no need for the scarcity mindset no need to worry that this won't work because there is abundance right around the corner for you i feel like you're realizing that you're seeing um you're kind of seeing the progress here especially if you've been working on a <laughs> if you've been working on a business um right as the eight of pentacles comes out um card that really represents the work. I feel like some of you have been really hard at work um, to make to make something work, to make it more, more fulfilling to you. And I do feel like there's a home business here for a lot of you. The work you're doing is, is paying off. There's so much abundant energy here and I was already picking up on that and then the Empress comes out um, most abundant card in the deck, in my opinion. What else do we have for number three? Oh, is that for you? Why is this sticking out? Well, of course we have the moon. There we go. There we go. Let's, let's get one more card. Um, confirmation, confirmation. Um, I just, I feel like a lot of you are moving toward making your work something that you love. I feel like this could have felt scary to you, maybe even mysterious to you, how to make all of this work. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've got the Four of Pentacles again. Um, wow. Bottom of the deck, the Knight of Pentacles. This is um, diligent work. This is diligent work. This is something that has a lot of potential. What are you guys working on? What are you guys working on? Because it's about to, um, it's about to really pay off. We have the Four of Swords under the Knight of Pentacles. So it's like this diligent work and this effort. The Four of Swords is about rest. It's about that pulling inward that we've been talking about with this. Um, slowing down a little bit, diligent work and slow down, um, work hard, play hard kind of energy, work diligently, um, and take that time to rest the work life balance. Um, wow. I feel like this message is so specific that, um, it's just odd that this is a general reading. I, I just feel like something's balancing out for you guys. Something's definitely balancing out for you guys. And it's like you're facing your fears. You're facing your fear that this isn't going to work for you. You're facing your fear that it's not going to be lucrative. Um, I do feel like you're being responsible by, by saving, by thinking about the future, whatever that is. It's like, this is well thought out. So if, if you're doubting yourself about this, I feel like what I'm seeing here is something that is very well thought out, but it does require kind of tapping into your, your deeper emotional needs and asking yourself what you really want. Some of you already made this transition, your guides are saying, that you've already kind of stepped out on this. You might have started the business or um, gotten the new job or established the balance that you're looking for in your life, but there might still be a little bit of, of hesitation to believe. And I'm just seeing here your work, um, your diligent work, your dedication to this, even kind of like a relentless nature with this, uh, very steadfast with, with this Pentacles energy. That commitment to this is going to pay off. It is going to be um, successful. It is going to put you in this Empress energy. And I just feel like there's something happening in October that's showing you that. It's showing you... I, I just have this feeling it's like it's showing you you can have it all. It's showing you it is possible um, for you to be fulfilled and for you to be provided for at the same time. Like, yeah, you can have that. You can have that. And you're going to see that you can have that in October. You're going to be figuring out how exactly to, to have that in October. 
let's see what we have for oracles. Whoa, your reading's going so long. I apologize. <laughs> what messages do you have for number three? number three we have birthing a new age so birthing new creations dreaming a new world into being wow this is what tapping into the moon energy is doing you're tapping into your emotions and and to those feelings you're like it's like you're able to really feel your way through this and it really is it's bringing a new world a new existence into your reality <laughs> it's blowing my mind right now. I don't, <laughs> I want to know what you guys are, are working on or, um, what, what part of life it's like you're re reinventing a part of your life, um, making it, making it more suited to you is how this is coming through. Customizing something, customizing your, your, um, your life, your experience, maybe even literally customizing something, a home, a, a car, something like that. It, it's, it's very interesting energy. We also have Akasha. Um, your guidance is divinely guided. That is so much Empress energy there because it's so, it just, um, it speaks to abundance for me. Um, and it's a, it's a really important reminder when you're in that moon energy, when you're um, feeling through all of this, when you're really tapping into those inner emotions, that inner voice and figuring out what you want in October, what you want going forward, knowing that all of that is divinely guided, especially if you're going out on a limb on something. For some of you, I'm surprised the fool didn't come out, but um, that could have been because it was, it was very specific. But for some of you, you might be feeling like you want to go out on a limb on something and you might wonder if that's the right move for you to make you're divinely guided in this. You're having, um, you're having this desire, this urge for a reason, and it has taken you digging deep to, to find that, to be in touch with your intuition, to be in touch with those emotions, to figure out what you really want and what's fulfilling. Let's wrap up with some advice for you. Number three, what advice do you have for number three for the month of October? Advice for number three for October. Use your hands. Some of you are creating, creating something. <laughs> this, this energy here is the eight of pentacles. Working with your hands, using your hands, and it doesn't have to be that you literally are using your hands for whatever this thing is, but it's like, it's this very focused energy um, and this working on something that that's going to pay off for you, something that brings you a lot of joy. And this is card 53, which adds up to an eight. So yeah, it's like, I just see you, um, I see you being diligent about something and I see more balance entering your life around the work that you do and, um, your fulfillment as a whole. I see you just gaining more clarity about that. What other messages do you have and advice for number three? What advice do you have for number three? Oh. Sound healing. So music, this can be like, um, like is shown on the card, like a sound bath or using, um, using some of these kind of like a tuning fork or, um, a bowl to kind of cleanse yourself, cleanse your energy. So this might be really important to you, but this can also be music. This can just be, um, like your favorite music. Um, <laughs> for some reason I flipped this over. We have card 33 at the bottom, um, and make a vision board. So that message was meant for you. Um, yeah, I feel like making a vision board is going to help you to tap into, uh, what this is that you're really feeling and what you're desiring. So you might actually develop a visual aid to kind of get that feeling, get those emotions. It's like a way of kind of getting things on paper. And since I'm saying that for some of you, this might be about journaling. Um, 
but it's kind of like get it out of your head or get it out of your body if it's just kind of a feeling you have something that feels very intangible that you can't quite grasp because you guys are figuring this out in October and that's why it's so cool that this card came out because this is kind of an indication of you really figuring this out figuring out what's going to make you happy what's going to give you that balance that you need what's going to fulfill you just physically emotionally spiritually on all levels what's fulfilling you on all those levels um, this shows me somebody, again, diligently working through the process, making it real, making it tangible, putting it on paper, making the board that you can um, look at and visualize where it is that you're going. There's so much clarity for you in October, and I do feel like it is, it's kind of about pulling in. It might be that you're pulling in and really figuring some of this stuff out, going deep at like making your vision board or journaling what you want, something like that. But it's like, you're making this real, like all this pinnacles energy you're making this so real um and for some of you you're continuing to live in the realness of it you're expanding this vision of this thing you've already built and that you've already brought into your life but yeah i just i see the balance here i see that you're looking for the balance that you're looking for fulfillment on all levels and um in october you're figuring that out so it's beautiful very beautiful. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Your reading has gone extremely long. Um, if you did enjoy this reading, um, you know what, you guys, I didn't even think, just thank you. Thank you for letting me read your cards and hanging out with me. And I didn't even say that. And I got to say that because I love you guys. Um, yeah, if you did enjoy this reading, if you resonated with any of these messages, don't forget to hit the like button, leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. And hopefully I'll see you again in another reading really soon. Bye.